Good afternoon. Welcome again, and thank you for being with us in the previous sessions. And for those who are just living this virtual experience of DHL Transportation Forum, welcome you all. So today we are closing with this conference, and our panelists will speak about security technologies in transportation. My name is Sergio Morales, developer developer of businesses in Latin America for DHL supply chain. These conferences will be in three languages, Spanish, lang Spanish, English, and Portuguese. So please select the language you prefer in the top part of this transmission. You can also see the agenda, which is available on the website that you can see on screen now. And I invite you to share a selfie, photo, comments, or experience of how you're living this event. In your post, please use the hashtag DHLTF2020 that you see on screen now, so we can keep on with the conversation. And well, getting started with this last talk for today, security technologies in transportation, it is a crucial issue on logistics and it is ideal for any company that wants to transfer from point A to point B their products. You can minimize the risks in Mexico and in other countries of the region. To answer these questions, we have Alejandro Saez. He is a um, security company, 360.com. And from here, he also helps his clients to diminish the risks in the supply chain using electronic security systems. He has 21 years experience in sales, operation, supply chain, financial analysis, and marketing in consumption, IT, and high level technology. Thank you for being with us, Alejandro. Also, Leonardo Rosillo is here with us, a professional who is specialized in, who specialized in security, in private security, and he is expert in custody and risk analysis and also in distribution and risk. He is an assessor and to risk management in several levels of every process in the strategic, tactical, and operational level. He has had several recognition and master degrees like OPALO, Specialist International Training, Management Update in Integral Security, and also Security in the Middle East, and Israeli Perspective, between many others. Welcome, Leonardo. And well, as host, you have Francisco Acosta, senior manager in DHL Supply Chain Mexico, who will be the moderator of this panel. Thank you a lot, Sergio. Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for being here with us. Thanks, uh, Mexico and Latin America in the safety panel in transportation. Uh, today, we're going to talk about means and tools, techno technological means and tools in safety. This is without a very important topic for us, for DHL Supply Chain Safety is First. And we're focused in to cover all necessities of all of our clients. That's why we're always looking for the best techniques to mitigate and minim minimize this robbery in transportation. Uh, for this, Braulio Quijano, Executive Senior for the Supply Chain in DHL Mexico, will explain the strategies of mitigation. Braulio, wel welcome. Thank you, Francisco. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being with us, Alejandro, Leonardo, in this panel. Within the strategies that we have in DHL Supply Chain Mexico to prevent and minimize robbery in transportation, we have the following. First of all, we have a security certification in all the lines of transportation and the drivers themselves. Also, our Department of Security and Transportation, uh, in close contact with our drivers and carriers, they check on the routes and the documentation and, in any case, do the certification of any of them to continue operations. And second of all, to standardize all of our procedures and safety protocols, that's very important because in DHL Supply Chain Mexico, we have more than 500 lines. So with these standardized procedures and protocols, we do the same actions for every of them in each part of the process. And the third point, training 
that we have for drivers and the protocols for security in route and also getting involved in all the chain of the transport in this helps to prevent and minimize this kind of events in, in the highways. And fourth, monitoring and visibility. DHL Mexico works with GPS providers and with them it coordinates so that if any alerts or any modification in the route that triggers a reaction, an immediate reaction that calls the, the attention of the authorities in the three levels of our government. And the fifth point is that the vehicles of our fleet are very well be equipped with technology. DHL Supply Chain Mexico is always investing and looking forward to get new technologies to build them up in their route and also keep track of them. Of course, taking care our operators as our priority. Thank you. Thank you, Rare Blue. Thank you very much for explaining what we are doing in order to prevent this, uh, this risk for transportation. I want to tell you how the HL supply chain is innovating. It is, I'm proud to say that these pickup trucks that were shown in the DHL Transportation Forum 2009 has been, have been very successful. And today, these pickup trucks are welcome in our portfolio of solutions. And they are very important in order to minimize risk in robbery tra in transportation. These pickup spec have a lot of innovating, uh, like the panic button, GPS, audio camera and video camera capacity to to carry things this spec are nowadays in seven places in the in mexico and in very short time they are capable of obtaining an, an award in our technology and green technology uh, award plus during the pandemic covid 19 they have been used to distribute donation from more clients as a service we also have a monitoring center that has the capacity to follow up to 200 services every day and we can see the the, the chain since the beginning until the end of it and to track this and system. As you can see, the HL is compromised with innovation. Because we are a global company, we look for the best practices in other countries and we bring them to minimize and to manage robbery situations and other accidents, to minimize them and to accomplish with this supply chain with our clients. Now, Alejandro Sáenz is going to talk about these new techniques. How are they being using in Mexico's transportation? These statistics and how can they help our partners? Alejandro, welcome and thank you a lot. Thank you, Francisco, for inviting me. Thank you, DHL. And mainly, I would like to talk a little bit about what's happening in technology and in electronic security. How is Mexico nowadays in this kind of incidents? There are four countries which are very dangerous. Those are Brazil, Russia, South Africa, and Mexico. Those four have had the most uh, number of events of robbery by organized crime and in these countries we have four or five states that are being attacked the most in highways one of the highways is mexico puebla veracruz where many incidents are reported and here very close the circuit around the, the capital city and also going in the route to celaya um, Fortunately, a big group was arrested there, but undoubtedly it is one of the states that has had the worst growth in this. And also Monterrey, 
and Morelia Lazaro Cárdenas, where we have the, the ports where the ships come, and this is under attack right now. So I would like to mention how is this going on while the pandemic or during the pandemic. March and April, we had an increase, mostly in Guanajuato state, where it grew 90% these delinquent attacks. And sadly, we have seen this growing with the pandemic. And just uh, later on, Leo will give us more information about what's going on with the pandemic nowadays. And we also have different kind of, of robbery to transportation. Some of us have seen how do they take over the authority, how, how the technical robbery is, is being held with auto complicity and auto robbery. And they also kill drivers. They put their posts of control also, and they steal information so they are able to attack us. And what the normal, like what's more normal now, is a part of violence, and like the common robbery, also extortion, emotional extortion. They may kidnap one of their family members, and with this they start attacking. Also with kidnapping. They kidnap themselves and organized crime has focused a lot in technology as well so now they are very sophisticated robbery like the use of jammer what is a jammer it blocks every kind of signal telephone signal satellite signal and also information robbery from within or from out the companies also scanners and lasers where where our transport parks at some point and they scan the the box and they know what is inside of it so they can do their to choose what transport you need to rob and with these same technologies and infrastructure that organized crime is using they break break in and uh, sometimes even build tunnels to hide the trailers and why do we don't find them because it is very well organized this organized crime nowadays the iot it is connectivity throughout the internet and we have validated there are several equipments now we are in the 4g which is the fourth generation and we have gps connection and we have several carriers in mexico but we do are very advanced, but we also have some transport units that are using obsolete technology. So that, in, for instance, Telcel, one of the main telephonic industries, they are still using 2G, uh, despite Movistar and AT&T, which are not using 2G. So that is why Telcel has an advantage edge on that, as they are still using this technology. But in 2021, 2022, they will cut off the 2G from our platforms. And we have uh, several kind of GPS equipments. It could be very, very small equipments or something sophisticated. The simple one, it is installed um, in a hidden way within the transport unit and they transmit where the unit is with satellites and it reports minute by minute or every 10 minutes depending on the frequency that the provider chooses now this today we have the some that are connected to the computer and they also inform the status of the engine also the status of the gas and several other stuff that's going on with the computer in the transport unit we have a gps that our drivers can have and with a panic button and we can track them with them and also gps that are connected to solar panels and with these even though the box doesn't have a, a battery it can report point to point where it is at and also these spy gps you put this uh, below the box or within the merchandise and with these we can localize merchandise immediately as you said, the, the DVR, which is live transmission, and the same transport unit will give us information. We will know what's going on in real time with, 
with the cameras we are we also have installed in the in the vehicles and also the electronic locks we can put this to any transport unit and very automized battery is automized and it will not let the box to be opened not even by the driver until they get to their destination also to block the doors we can block them even though they come with any kind of of crack to try to break in the door there is no way to get in also you can put those locks in the doors and they will block it automatically not even the driver will be able to have access to it as it is done in DHL right now we also have Contraba Quintas so, um, this this avoids the box to to be detached from the truck itself and so the organized crime cannot transport the box also you see in cars today that you click a button and you open the door this goes in with some chips that the operators have and when he is taken down from the truck the truck will turn off so we have several strategies we can have alarms that we can put in the wheel and it alerts the monitoring centers something important the other detectors yammer that that have a technology that almost all gps can have now if we if we go by this digital this organized crime this can be blocked at any moment it is important to have sensors in every door, of course, when they are open, when they are closed. Sensors of the seatbelt, as uh, several transportation units are doing. Also, equipments that are disposable that you can have in your, in your fright. So in the moment that the door is open and the light comes in, we can know what's coming with, with this that some of the equipments that we are using now in 360 and in DHL, but not only hardware will help us to prevent any kind of delinquent act, but we also have to have an advanced platform as we do. So we need to be certified pen test. What is this? The pen test is uh, hacker proof, where you hire a hacker basically, and you say, hey, attack my platform. And this hacker will validate that, uh, until he says, no, I cannot get into your platform. So that way we can prevent information from coming out or the platform to be, to be shut down. So we need also to have a platform that's compatible with various GPS systems to manage the information of these transport units. Also, our platform has geocercas and geo routes, so we can know from point A, from point B, what we are doing, and it doesn't generate any kind of return so we can know when are we stopping and not to stop in points that are not validated and some points that might be of high risk. Also, this platform can have several users and several permits to validate. For instance, there will be some users that can only see the estimated time of arrival of our transport and others that are able to track the whole route of this transport unit also to have heat maps of what's going on where we have low coverage so we can validate where we are stopping and where we are losing the signal and it doesn't generate like a false alarm or anything and have a platform that can handle several events at the same time for instance low signal and other technical issues maybe um, malfunction and we can take all this information and be able to send commands why do we need these commands so we can open open a lock open a door start the engine and the platform also has a, an, a, an app on the phone so we can validate these these permissions in, in any point of the route this platform needs to be validated to have mirror screens so it, if the authorities are not uh, connected to our platform we can send a mirror image so they can know where our transport unit is and what's going on in real time and that helps to have 
a rating which is higher of recovery of the freight. And also the platform must be available 24-7 and be available in several locations, so this one will not fall in any moment. And we need to, to have several monitoring protocols, digital of course, and every time a transport unit goes out, we need to have a real programming. What does this mean to have the whole information of this transport unit? Where, where is it going? What's the operator? And when can, where can he stop in his route? And this indicates to know the route perfectly and also to know the times that are allowed and have all the for instance if we are in a highway which is high risk if we are driving in a time that we shouldn't be there of course organized crime will attack us and we will lose merchandise so it is important to be very very clear on where we are at and as technology Thus, we need to, to have a presence there and diminish the risks in every way. We also need to have close contact minute by minute with the driver and with our monitoring center so we can know what's going on. On top of that, the platform has connectivity with the authorities, so it, they can be linked and this is associated with different organisms that help us to have a, a quick response by the authorities and others so they can attack like in from various angles and uh, there's always an incident we take photos of our units the plates and physical traits of the drivers and of course having certified drivers as we mentioned before this other thing what do we do in a protocol when we are under attack when the alert stage three comes uh, in order to avoid false alarms that can happen very often we have very little time to be able to have the recovery some minutes or some seconds to know if we are being robbed or not and the moment where we have this information we escalate this to the rob unit and go into a war room that is only focused in that and in that way, we always have confirmation from the authorities. And that is crucial to have some pre-report. So in case that the delinquent is captured, the authorities can, can do something about it and generate an alert. And to bring, so something that will be able to help and so we can uh, fight back organized crime, to have high technology equipment, to have a platform, to have monitoring with the personnel that's certified, and that will help us a lot. We have seen how we have diminished the risks up to a 90% of robbery, and to recover the merchandise, not only recover the transport unit, but the merchandise, that's what we are here all for. And with this, we'll be able to have a better ranking of recovery thanks to technology and well thank you for your invitation and we'll be listening to any doubt you have thank you alejandro because of your information that you share with us and for allowing the audience to know an important part of what we do when we uh, deal with these uh, products now leonardo rosillo can you please tell us about the situation about the robbery robberies in mexico and in the pandemic of course, uh, good afternoon. Thank you, DHL, and hello to you all. It is a very important topic, an interesting one. We have seen an increase uh, on, on this, despite the authorities have said there, there is a, a diminution in the rob events. They are, the truth is that it is not like that. We see that organized crime is very violent, and in the end of the day, what it's leading us it is to it is leading us to it is leading us to have a lack of control in transportation robbery this pandemic brought us like the idea to be careful of some kind of products and merchandise that they were not secured before what do i mean with this uh, we 
we saw that the basic food items was never secured. In the past, the crime organization was looking for technology and some other valuable merchandise, but with the lack of jobs we have now in this country, with all the people that lost their jobs overnight, all these people, they are of course forced to go out and see, find a way to earn their lives and have some kind of income. So what are we seeing? We see that robbery, maybe 20, 30 years ago, robbery was related to this robbery was like, they struck, it's uh, an easy target. But we see that that's not happening now. Just that the crime goes after anything, crosses their path. The organized crime is evolving, really. And we as companies, we may not be evolving that much. We are stuck with procedures that we think are adequate. Because yes, we may have one or two robberies, in a thousand shipments, so the risk is low, or we qualify it as low. But what happens when this robbery it starts being like from diverse products, but we see that violence is worsening? We have seen some cases where drivers have lost their lives because of these criminals. We have seen also guards who are losing their lives, and now just the criminal comes and doesn't say like, I am not robbing you, I am robbing the company. This is not happening anymore. Um, this evolution is going in the way in which the criminal just starts shooting the unit or the drivers or the guards, tries to do something to stop the transport unit or to um, avoid the guards. And that is when we have a problem because we're losing lives. And that is more valuable than the products. Life is, of course, a bigger, a bigger thing. And this evolution is leading that technology is crucial nowadays um, fighting, fighting this uh, transportation robbery. And something that DHL has done is, is that it is not just a guard, but it is a mix of tools, the ones that they have and the one that we have as DHL, as providers, as GPS, as guard providers like us. And we are just not the guards. Now we are in different modalities. Like, yes, we are the, the normal guards that we knew with the motorcycles and all that in some difficult cities but apart from that we also have armored units and we have had to armor more units because of this violent issue that we are having during the pandemic and unfortunately as i said in the beginning the official numbers the very scare numbers that we have say that the that the numbers are going down but that is I wouldn't say it's a lie, but it is like a double sword. What do I mean with double sword? Yes, they might be less robbery to transportation, but we have seen that during the pandemic, transportation was, of course, less in amount. There was not the same volume that the units were transporting in the highways. Of course, the volume of transportation went down, so the, the travels came down, the number of transport units in highways or cities came down, but the number of robberies went up. So what we have is practically a, a increase, considerable increase in transportation robbery in which violence has led us to this, to this part that we weren't seeing before. So it is important for the driver nowadays to be very aware of their processes and the GPS provider, that all the procedures are very well followed. And before, during and after the service. Why before? Because the driver 
has to be prepared, the guards need to be prepared, the clients need to be prepared that sometimes operators are in not very easy situations to perform the service and that logistics lead to that, that transportation have very little time to do it and the driver doesn't have very good conditions to this why do we mean with this condition that the route is secure, that even though there's nothing secure in the country, we know there are certain stops that we can have more peace of mind than in others. And in these stops, we want cameras to be in place, of course. We want light to be there. Um, uh, we would like to have just one way in and one way out, not like everyone. And in this new normality that the pandemic has pushed us to, we see that robbery has evolved, as I said, that nowadays uh, crime is organized crime that invests resources, people, money, technology. They are investing in all these, and when the driver comes into a stop and goes down to it, the guards go and need and then organized crime is already there waiting for them in their stops even though we we why can't we get our guard down because security has left as uh, these these people behind these observers and they are just paying attention to what unit is having guards, what unit is armored, what unit has locks, what what driver looks uh, um, like more easy target. And all that is being watched very closely by organized crime. They're looking for the way to make their crimes in the fastest way possible. So when the driver or when the guards let their guard down, where we don't see for one second where the unit is at, we know that in our country there's no like safety culture. We're not used to this. So when the driver stops the unit, it we give the opportunity to these thieves, they scan the units, they identify what product is it carrying, if it is an iPad, if it is a cloth, fabric. Sometimes these organized crime are, are very connected with the gas stations and they know, well, they are having these products, they are carrying this product. And that is when, when the thieves have the big chance. But the robbery wouldn't wouldn't happen most likely in this stop but after when the the driver is comfortably driving passing this stop it is a job in which you you can let your guard down but what does the thief does he follows you and some miles ahead they have all the infrastructure and everything set up and i mean vehicles weapons people we have identified convoys come with 14 15 people to steal a, a truck and not only a truck but anyway uh, some products that are very valuable like technology that goes like in small volumes like a small volume of, of phones but in money like the investment on that is very valuable. So they don't use a trailer. They use a truck that can carry one ton, but the value of it is much more than one of a trailers. So that is when the thief has the opportunity to, to manage around with a small unit in the paths that they clear, and it is easier for them to run away. So what kind of merchandise is attacked the most during the pandemic? Before we were used to be robbed in technology, we need to take care of technology. We were saying we would need to take care of medicines, but this pandemic is pushing people to steal corn and beans and toilet paper. Somebody said in a, in a conference before that it is very easy to steal the toilet paper and to sell it in the flea market 
or in the black market and the turn back of the investment has been very quickly for the thieves rather than it is to sell technology which is more complex so the 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 increase of this of this situation it is a mirror that the very society is decomposed that is us as a society we're generating the demand it is very common to see in the markets in Mexico City where they sell screens and they are mobile markets, tianguis in Mexico, these like flea markets that are established in certain streets in certain times where you can find TVs, washing machines. We also see food and toilet paper and that is half price in the black market. And why do we say this is a decomposed society? Because we are used every time that we say, I want to buy a screen. And there's always somebody, maybe even in social media, somebody who comes and tell us. And we receive a million messages. Contact me, I have ones that are cheaper than in any other part. And unfortunately, people prefer to buy these, these products, which have the same brand, the same manufacturing process, and they prefer it to do and go buy it on the black market than to a mall or the official store of the, of the producer. So nowadays, we don't only see that we need to take care of technology, but also we need to take care of, with a mix of security services, we need to have sensors and more technology, the GPS, it needs to be more, more independent every time, that it does not depend on a monitoring center anymore, that it needs to be automated, the ones that were in the market 10, 15 years ago, now they are obsolete. As the regular guard was, now it is obsolete. We need more modern technology, guards with uh, different procedures, training from drivers. We need to train the, the guards to check on the routes, to check the stops. All these we have to... We need... Our society is doing this. Why? Because we are fomenting this market because it's cheaper. Some example, we see fruits and vegetables in the traffic lights. More and more trucks are in the streets offering these kind of products. And if we saw in, in the legal market, We are used to do it easy. I rather do it in the corner of my house, which is cheaper, rather to go to the official supermarket because I will save the gas and I will save the parking price and all that. So this pandemic nowadays, what we see, this pandemic is leaving us not only like, like the idea we should not just care about technology, but also other kind of products that I must say it is because us as a society are demanding stolen products. If we didn't buy in the black markets, criminals wouldn't have a place to place their robbed products. And if there was no market, there wouldn't be the need to rob our units with the violence it's doing now. And well, the panelists have said, we talked about it here, there are certain routes that have seen an increase in robbery. We all know that. The drivers know that, of course, because those are the ones who are risking their lives in there. And the, the pandemic is... Before we had like the transport unit, the transport unit will show three or four hours later, it will be there in some other street. But now the transport units are not being recovered. We have seen news, we have seen stuff in news and in other official media where it is ever com more common every time to see um, pieces of land where they find the 20 transportation units that were reported robbed. 
and you see vehicles and trailers. So yes, of course, there is an increase of transportation robbery because of the pandemic, and not only in high value products, but also in beans and corn, which have uh, a more, we have problems that are very identified, like red zones. We know that Mexico Veracruz highway is very dangerous. It is very hard to control robbery and the route for Lazaro Cardenas. It is just a shame what the criminals do in these kind of routes. And in Reynosa to Matamoros and to Monterrey City, Matehuala, it, it is just, uh, we are seized in this. And I can't stop mentioning that we should just not only train drivers, have guards and have a GPS, but also as a society, we need to give a step ahead. We need to be ahead of the thieves with better technology, better drivers, better lines, better custody, uh, a mix of all this to bring the risk down. Okay. Thank you, Leonardo, for this valuable information so we can see where we're standing in robbery and transportation in Mexico. Now we want to ask you some questions so you can share your comments and experiences. And to our audience, please share uh, whatever you want to know, your question through our chat, so we can share it with our panelists. Alejandro, how effective is the use of this technology? And please reinforce which is the recovery rate when we use it. The use of technology, like having it the correct way, will help us to diminish even a 90% the, the criminal events. And this is because of a full monitoring, a smart GPS and certified personnel that will help us to take, make fast decisions and of course be linked with the authorities to have any kind Thank of you. support. Leonardo, before a robbery, how important is it to denounce at the right time, at the right moment from our carriers? Well, it is an important question because nowadays it is very important to, for an insurance issue to make the report to the, the authorities because if we do not report, the authorities will say that the numbers of criminal events are going down when we know it is not like that. But we know that the transportists and the custody It is for me very shameful that after you were robbed, where the operator was hurt, when you know that the thief won, that they stole the merchandise, and we still need to go through the hassle of going, make a report, to have the transport unit released, all these. So it is very, very costly. Sometimes it costs a lot for, for the transportist to recover the year you need. This can take months. For instance, in Puebla, I lived something where you go, we can't recover the transport with the merchandise in it after three, four months. You know how costly that is for, for everybody? It is important to report, unfortunately, the hassle that the companies and everybody needs to go to recover their unit is very hard. And that's when the transportation, co it is better. Thank you. Alejandro, how advanced are we here in Mexico in the use of these technologies? Do we have a comparison in how bad or how worse are we? Well, sadly, we are very advanced in this, considering or comparing ourselves with first class countries. We have more robberies and companies like ours have worked very hard to support all the transport units. 
we are behind because we are still using 2G technologies and there are others using 4G technologies, but we have our own developments in software and hardware to increment all these systems and tools, and we are more advanced than in first-class countries. They're very focused in the logistics, in the arrivals, and we are focused in the arrivals, but also in the security, because organized crime is stronger in third-class countries than in first-class countries. So we are very advanced in technology to, to fight crime than any other country. It is good at bad, of course. Thank you. Leonardo, which is the perception of the guild trans in transportation through of these technologies? Well, I think there's a good response, but the transportist is not doing this by this obligation. This He's an expert in transportation, nothing else. He doesn't need to equip his units, they equip it because of their own safety? Okay, that is one thing. But the drivers or the companies that transport, he's an expert on technology. He wouldn't let us lie, but technology is uh, costly. And when the companies, some technology that will help us to recover the 90 or the 80% of the losses, when he gets to a client, they wouldn't be able to pay it. So there is a good response, but I think it is very slow. And it is slow because of a matter of cost. In Mexico, I think we have companies. Uh, that is an invitation I would do for the transport companies to get close to the experts regarding this, to be able to equip their units. And because we find people who sell equipment that are not adequate for transportation, it is not the same to have a GPS in my car than a GPS in a freight uh, trailer. So I would invite you to get in touch with providers who have technology for transportation, specifically for high volume transportation. Thank you. You talked about a very interesting topic, a mixture of technology, a mix. Which is that mix, the ideal mix? I mean, we have more than 500 partners in the EHL, and everybody has a different conception. You as experts, which is the perfect mix? Well, this mix, uh, in depends a lot on the kind of load that you have, the merchandise you have. Um, as I said before, it is to have uh, avant-garde technologies in GPS and in others that take care of your transport unit as a control tower or a monitoring center that is being very clear. And on top of that, if regarding the type of merchandise you have, they must be guards that can be monitored with your platforms. And that way you can have an interesting mix. If there is any kind of robbery, you can also link that to the authority and bring the risks down. Something we would like to consider, and yeah, to consider about this mix, is not every product has the same risk. I mean, we insist they are different products, different values, and specific thefts. So it is important for transporters to, for storage as well, like you, in the HL you do that. It is important to have a, a mother storage, a mother engine to help us identify the type of product, the zone, the location where I have to go through, the schedule I have to go through, Every time for logistics, and you are the experts, the schedules are less. You have to be careful with this uh, before we can do it every time at night, in the morning, in the afternoon. But now we cannot do that. There are restrictions because of the crime that is growing up. So this mixture has to be based on a mother. We have to think about this. 
for example, if we have a very commercial product which is easy to move to a high risk zone, evidently I have to consider not a guard, like a physical guard, but maybe a virtual guard with a GPS that is perfect for it to protect it. Because if we go to this zone with custody, I mean, people see it. People need to, to do this mix. We can go to a zone that has low risk with a high product, high value product, but because this route is not that complicated, maybe we could have more uh, capable, we will be air capable to have a normal custody, an armed custody. It depends on the schedule, the zone. We have to consider every point. Thank you so much, excellent. Now you were mentioning these, the trends of some sectors. Do you see any increase in any of these sectors? Well, uh, personally, I think that this growth is uh, going to grow in the basic products, basic food products. Uh, we are custodying uh, groceries, bean, oil, corn, toilet paper, uh, soap, shampoo. Why are we guarding this? Because I said before, to have this unemployment that we have and this necessity that, that nowadays we have, people need this type of products. They need basic products, the basic food, basic products. They need all of this, something to eat, something to survive. So this competence, uh, where I see it, it is going through there. Because people, maybe they are going to stop buying TVs, but they are going to continue on showering. So this low product, uh, when it goes to the black market, that product moves quickly. Why? Because people need this to survive, to live, to continue on living. So this uh, thief has that demand to put these products in these markets, this informal market, this black market, and that's why we keep on uh, high, having these high robberies into the uh, basic products. Yes. Sorry, Braulo, and what would be your recommendation? Maybe it's a hard question. Don't do it. Your recommendation to go ahead of organized crime because it seems that organized crime uh, regardless of what we do like security wise it's always ahead of us uh, do you like to answer uh, well what have we done for example of face mask there has been robbery but we recovered in uh, storage uh, because we put a uh, spy equipment inside the, mer the merchandise so we could see w what happened and we need to be ahead of this for example, a little small GPS that is hidden in there that has a good battery. So we could uh, re recover every element, every product. So we always have to be thinking about winning crime. Yes, we would like to keep on talking about this, which is something in our day to day. We can continue for hours, but we ran out of time. I want to thank everybody and thank you for being here in the thank panel. You. We'll go, go back, back to Sergio. Well, thank you so much. It was a very interesting panel. Thank you for being with us and to the public too. Thank you for giving us a perspective on what are the main, the most important issues here. So with this, we are over in our second day of our DHL Transportation Forum 2020. We thank all the audience for your time and attention. We'll be waiting for you tomorrow so you can participate in the sessions we have prepared. We have a session with e-commerce and sustainability transport and logistic innovation. So it is an open forum and you can share this experience with whomever you want. You can share your experience with the hashtag DHLTF2020 and you will have a great evening. Thank you so much.